Zoom, zoom, zoom. It's Amigos, episode 343. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Zoom. Oh. Aaron, what's the fastest you've ever gone in your life? Okay, we're gonna go on. We're gonna go. That's a horrible question. We're gonna go. We're gonna go running speed. Yeah. Bicycle. Oh, oh. (laughs) Okay. Bicycle. So, what's the fastest you feel like you've ever ran in your life? Well, I did run the race. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of the length of my run, right? Speed wise, what about what about just have you ever been chased by somebody and you felt like you had to run real fast? When I was a little kid, at Mm -hmm. the playground, we'd play like tag and stuff. And I, my, I had a, I watched a lot of. um, you know, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that when uh, big cats were chasing gazelles and stuff, that one of the things that they did was make these crazy turns. Like, mm-hmm. just, so that was, I was not fast, but I was, I was uh, elusive. Yeah. I would run in these crazy, I would make these, you can juke. What second turn? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, no, juke, it would be like going like, ooh, ooh. I would be like literally like curved. Oh, like a, like a 45 Shoot degree off, turn. Yeah, yeah, in just crazy directions. And mm-hmm. they still catch me. But at least I was out of breath when they did it. But the, yeah, but no, I've never been particularly fast. Even you know, I was when, up until I was probably, I don't know, nine. I was sort of a lighter kid, mm-hmm. and then it kicked in. Right. Uh, and uh, so I was, but I was never really super speedy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in terms of a bicycle, probably the fact when I was riding bikes when I was a kid, everyone rode bikes, and probably the fastest I ever went. I'm sure I've told you this story, but I got into ten speed. And me and Hose went to the top of this hill over here, mm-hmm. the very top, and mm-hmm. we're going to have a race to my house. And the hill goes down, and then it's like a little like section where there's a curve where you can keep going straight, and we're supposed to go around the curve. I was going so fast on a 10-speed that I went, I didn't make the curve. And mm-hmm. I went down to the neighbor's yard, through a hedge. Oh, man. All the way through. That's right. On the bike. TV. Yeah. yeah, and then hit a light post and oh. knocked the light post out of the ground. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the bike and me flew into the driveway. I think I would hit a car. And I laid there just like on the ground, like checking to make sure all my stuff still worked. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I could hear was Hose cackling as he laughed. He was laughing. He was like, oh, are you okay? Oh, and I was, I was just like, ah. Mm. And that light post was, I literally disconnected the wiring to it. It was mm. completely mauled. Mm. So that, I'd say that's the fast. So what about you? You know, I can't, I've never been a particularly fast runner either. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I tend to avoid uh, running whenever I can, but <laughs> with the bike, uh, I used to be obsessed with riding my bike to Dairy Mart. Okay. So, you know, I live... You mean you mean in town? Yeah. Okay. So I used to live... Well, you know, like, uh, by Hurricane Town Elementary. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and so I'd, I'd ride out Harbor Lane and then come down Main Street and go to Dairy Mart. It's not that far. No, it's not that far. Well, coming down that hill one time, most of the time I tried to have a, kind of a measured descent, because there's no sidewalk, and that, that road's kind of treacherous. Yeah. Uh, I started going way too fast. And when I got down to the bottom of the ditch, right as soon as you come up to the hill, like by where the uh, the Baptist Church is, there was this drop off where there was this ditch. Yeah. And uh, man, I came within a hair's breadth of falling into that ditch and probably dying. You know. So. This is unrelated, but I remember when they they were building the dog park up yeah. there, and and we were me and Rich were out there checking it out, mm-hmm. right? And we were in the parking lot driving, and the parking lot's done, right? Mm-hmm. And we're driving around, and all of a sudden the parking lot just ends. And there's a three-story drop. And I remember slamming on the brakes. And I swear to God, I thought we were going to Duke boy this sucker. You know? And I thought to myself, this can't be safe. Yeah. Someone's going to kill themselves. And sure enough, like a week later, I read on the uh, in, a pa- in the newspaper that someone had went off that thing in their car, like now, matched their car. At, we're at the dog park? The dog track. Up at the, oh, the, the dog track. Okay, dog yeah, track. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is... There's some perilous things up there, especially when you when you when you uh, think about the kind of drinking that people do at the casino. Well, if you think about the betting they do, That's because true. that place you might as well just put your money in the hole. You're not the odds are horrible. I wonder if they still have the dog track. Is that still legal up there? I mean, sure, it's still legal. Is it still profitable? I don't know. Mm. Because since they opened up, uh, like table games. Well, no, not that. Now you can just gamble from home. Oh, yeah. So that's going to definitely take a chunk out of them. Eh, screw them. Yeah. That whole thing was shady from Jump Street. Plus, yeah. they kind of booted me. I don't like that. Well, they paid you great wages for a while. No, they didn't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I didn't get a taste of that sweet money. Really? No. Then you didn't get a cut? No, and they were fleecing suckers left and right. Mm-hmm. I'd see old people waiting at the door on Friday morning. 
they bring them in by the bus load. Mm-hmm. They just sit there and play those slot machines all day long. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it is ridiculous. That's kind of a bummer way to move into the rest of the show. Yeah. Well, Aaron, let's zoom right in to Zoom, shall we? Let's get into it, Boat. So, <laughs> had you played this one, Boatster? Never. Never. I played a game called Zoop before. Yeah, I've heard of Zoop. Yeah. I think I played this on stream one time. Okay. So, I think I did play it before now. But it was still kind of a, it was, I wasn't what I expected. Let's mm-hmm. just put it that way from the name. So uh, this came out early on, 1988. That's old school. The Amiga, I mean, people say, oh, the Amiga was out in 85, but really no one really had one hardly until and, like 86. And, right, and I mean, the games was a, it's a slow, slow trickle those first couple of years. Yeah, Not a yeah. Not a lot going on. Yeah, and so this would have been, this is when they were just starting to kind of crank it up. Uh, uh, this is a game uh, published... Uh, by Discovery uh, Boat, and they, uh, if you'll remember, they were behind Hybris. It's the very first game we ever did. Mm-hmm. Another early Amiga game. Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and we'll get into the quality later, comparison-wise. Uh, this was, again, and this was, this did not have listed a, a a developer. So I'm assuming this was, I don't know if this is just these guys, or they worked for Discovery. Uh, some of the, at least one of them worked on uh, some discovery properties, so but who could say? Uh, the uh, head coder on this was a guy named Frank Nihas, and you'll notice as I go through some of these names, there weren't a lot of effort from these guys on the Amiga. So I don't know if they just moved on or whatever. Frank only worked on a couple games, Mike, Mike the Magic Dragon, and Swooper. How do you get away with Mike the Magic Dragon? I'm Listen, like, I think this game was uh, produced in Germany, yeah. West Germany. Yeah. And so Newhouse probably had a couple buddies from the demo club. Oh, maybe you're right. And uh, Mike the Magic Dragon and Swooper got the job. You know, I noticed on one of the screens in the corner it said high res on it. And I thought to myself, this doesn't look that high res. That's because there's a guy, one of the guy, graphics guys named Mike High Red. <laughs> what a great name. Yeah, he's in the right business. Uh, he also worked at Arkanoid. Uh, and you had a couple here, uh, Gisela and Jacques Wiegelt. They mm. both worked on a game called Persecutors. That mm. sounds pretty cool. We could be in that game. Yeah. And uh, I want to highlight one other guy, Torben Backinger Larson. He worked on some of our favorite games and some of the games we've covered almost all these. Sword of Sedan, Battle Squadron, Hybris. Goldcorn Expressin, remember yeah, that one? That was a great game. We we got a lot of views on that mm-hmm. weird game too, and in a game called Giganoid. Okay. So you've and then uh, rounding it out, uh, Julian Lafay uh, did music. She worked on sort or he. You never know with Julian. You did. never know. Sort of sedan and Thomas Lope Lopatic worked on Ganymede Street Gang Ringside, tons of other stuff. He's the one uh, person in this group that worked on a ton of stuff. Obviously, it's an OCS game, not an, uh, an original Amiga game, apparently. According to Lemon, uh, this uh, was the PC, was the original source, but who knows. I know where it wasn't from, from the, was the Mega Drive. I can tell you that. <laughs> we'll get to that. But this had a DOS, a C64, and a Mega Drive release boat. Um, so we should probably describe what this is. You're better at these puzzling games than I am in terms of description. Try to give the people a, a sense of what we're talking about here, boat. This is Amadar. It is Amadar. It, it's it's Amadar. Like we're gonna if we're gonna go down that road and categorize it, it's Amador meets a, a, a little bit of like a, a Kicks is in there, you know? Cause well, it's Amador itself is like Kicks. It, it, well, it is. It is. But uh, go ahead. You, I, I'm not the biggest so Amador if fan. If you if you if you're not familiar with Amador, what you have is you have a grid that of, uh, of of squares and amadar it's actually different shapes but in this game it's all squares and these squares are arranged in various patterns uh what you have to do is you have to uh, trace the outline of each square to uh to complete uh and when you do that they get filled in with color and when you've filled in all of the squares and the entire stage has changed uh from one color to another you move on to the next stage um in amadar you have uh, the ability, I believe, in uh, Amador is a weird game because you're, you're playing. You're playing different. Um, you're playing as different characters throughout the game. The first level, you're a gorilla, uh, but in the we're just going to take the first level of Amador as an example. Uh, you uh, you have an offensive sort of weapon. It's not really a weapon, but you can you can make the enemies jump. Okay, and then yeah. you can go under them. In this game, uh, what you can do is you can leave little. Uh, they kind of look like little rodent droppings. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and well, I mean, I'll, 
You're not wrong, but I, I mean that's, that's that was the first thing I thought of, especially when those lips chomp down on them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, in what you're trying to do is you're trying to evade uh, the enemies that are floating around the stage, complete the squares. By doing that, you will go to the next stage, and the next stage gives you a set of squares in a different pattern. That's the that's the, the gist of the game is that you're trying to get as far as you can. This is a high score game with multiple levels, uh, and you're trying to complete as many stages as possible. I believe there's 50 stages in the game. Is that right? I uh, think that's true. It's, I think the 36. 36. Okay. Um, the funny thing now I want to talk about the way this game starts before we get too far into yeah because the opening is probably the best part of the game, but probably not. Okay. Okay. It is. <laughs> yeah. Now. Okay. First, a few things that I know about this, and this was kind of hard to research, but I tried. If you look on Lemon, there's two listings for Zoom. There's Zoom, and then there's like American version mm -hmm. of Zoom. Okay? American Zoom. The American Zoom? Well, you don't have that. Anyway, the reason for that is this game was around for a long time in like a demo form without a, a cracked version of the, of the full game. The full version wasn't cracked, get this, until 2016. That's right. That's right. It was well in. Yeah. And so the the two they are the same game mm -hmm. for just for future, but it, there are subtle differences in these versions or not subtle. So in the <laughs> we I, the one that I played was the well, I guess was listed as the U.S. version. But what it is, it, when this thing starts up, you hear uh, the famous refrain from the Rick James bow, slash now, now, now. Bow, MC now, Hammer bow, now, now. can't touch this yeah. that one except. This, pretend that never stops playing, okay? <laughs> and then to augment that, they've got a graphical display of like a stage, and then your main character will come out and do stuff. Yeah. I sat and watched it for like two or three minutes, and yeah. it was all different stuff. Mr. Zoom flounces out on the yeah. stage. He does magic. He dances around. Clones appear. They dance around. You know what it reminded me of, Aaron, was the opening to WizKid. It, it, Wiz was, it was every bit as wacky as yeah. WizKid, which was real wacky. Yeah. The, he came out, and he came out with multiples of himself. Mm -hmm. he, I think he did like a puppet show. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he, he flew. He did all kinds of crazy stuff to, like, I guess get you excited for the game. Right. And it did. I was like, man, yeah. I don't know what am I getting ready to do. I sat here? there and I watched it because I mean, there's a. It's not just like two or three things. He does about half a dozen things before it loops around. Yeah. Um, I wish that there could have been the super freak, uh, you know, the voice in there. If you're going to go all the way, you got to yeah. put that in there. This is that you know we've seen a few games. Usually they're they're public domain games that'll take and just like steal riffs. This this was almost like and even in the game there are calls. It reminded me of like pinball. Mm -hmm. It's like there were certain things that would make a call, and, and to the point where it got irritating. Although again, not nearly as irritating as it was on the Mega Drive. We'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, so yeah, the sound engineering on this. So let's say almost all the effects are probably borrowed, and the and the, and they do can, can, they can get a bit irritating. Well, this this game is the perfect example of. You have a computer that can sample different effects. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that now. <laughs> yeah, and so they pulled out every, they put out all the stops. Everything that you do plays some wacky effect, and most of the time the effects are not exactly pleasant to listen to. Yeah, I, I would, I would say. I mean, they seem they're okay. When you die, the sound that it makes is like one of those. Uh, remember, you used to get those things and you pull apart and they go. Yeah. That, that's one of the that's that's the effect. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna put over the sound too great. And then on top of that, when the game when when the game starts, uh, when you start when you push play, start the game. This three dimensional flat. I guess it's not three dimensional. It's a <laughs> And what would you call this? It's a the, rotating shape yeah. demo style. It, it careens into so, view, so the, the play field. So, the, yeah, the play field, the stage play field rotates into view. It starts out small and it gets bigger. It scales before it kind of materializes and gets filled in. Yeah. It's a neat effect. It kind of reminds you of, you know, we saw this with Crystal Castles on the ST show. Uh, we've seen various games where, the, you know, the drawing of the stage is a big part of it. There was a 3D game that we played not long ago. I'm trying to think of Tower of Babel, yeah. I think, also formed itself in the same way. You know, we, so. we marveled. We just, when we did the last Atari ST show, uh, we marveled at how awesome the the, the uh, castles look. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming this is sort of the same kind of thing where this seems like it to be really hard. 
but apparently it's not super hard because we see it a lot, mm-hmm. but it's still cool. It's still cool. It looks like something out of Star Wars, yeah. you know? It, like, it, it reminded me of, like, the thing they used to, for radar, the aiming yep, thing. You exactly. Remember that gimmick? Yep. And so this play field comes out, and then you play on mm-hmm. it. Pretty cool. It's at a, it's set at an angle, so you can see the back. And so it's pretty, it's pretty slick the way they do it. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned that the league character looks like a Pac-Man we may have. Uh, the, as you roam around the board, uh, you're chased by some stuff. Uh, and so what is the stuff? Well, there's there's uh, various stuff that will come and go, and some stuff doesn't appear on later levels. Uh, and some stuff doesn't hurt you, and some stuff does. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. The way that I played this game changed markedly yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, I, when I played it more. Because on the face of it, you start playing this game, and you think, okay, I'm playing a game that's sort of like Amidar. Yeah. You want to avoid all the enemies all the time. Well, it turns out that, you know, you've got power-ups in this game, and what the power-ups do is they give you a sort of invincibility shield that, that yeah. ticks down. Yeah. And so your main uh, enemy is a, is, a, is a pair of lips right out of Rocky Horror. I'll okay. take a Rolling Stone. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and I, but you can, once you have your shield, you can go right through the lips and you can, you can be fine. So what I always did was I always tried to collect the items first, build up a huge invincibility shield, and then make my pattern and try and get through with the pattern as fast as I could before, you know, your invincibility runs out. Now, the other enemies in the game that kind of, uh, they, they kind of look like snails without shells, uh, they, uh, you can, they just slow you down. They don't yeah. hurt you at all. And so uh, what you're trying to do is you're, you're picking up points, you're picking up uh, your, which is like a, a cash, a cash bag. You're picking up apples, uh, and uh, and you're dropping. Like I said, you're dropping these these droppings. I'm not. What are they supposed to be in the game? Do you remember? Listen, I had I was baffled, and when I read the instructions, they didn't help a bit because they suck. We'll get to that too. That that's one of my problems with the game. It's like I was trying to learn what was happening because. For, in fact, before we went on the air, one of the things you pick up in this is a is a question mark. Mm-hmm. And I told Boat, I'm like, listen, the question mark, as far as I could tell, gave you a random uh, power item. And keep in mind, you got power ups, power downs, and then there's an item that appears on the screen. If you run into it, it just kills you. Right. And I asked Boat, I'm like, wait a minute, can this question mark kill you? Because it killed me. And he goes, yes, it can kill you. I had to confirm this. So you there, it's the the stuff that drops in the game, it's hard to understand what it is. It's kind of hard to, to make out what it is sometimes, depending on where it plays on the play field. When it's in conjunction with the stuff moving around, it gave the power-ups gave me trouble. Yeah, and the the problem is, I just feel like there's just oh, there's candy. Oh, it's candy. That's I think that's what you're dropping. You're dropping candy, and they're eating the candy. Okay. It doesn't look like candy. It looks like rat drop. Yeah. So the candy, you drop the candy. You, the, uh, you get apples, and that replenishes your shield, and then the money is just straight-up points. The question mark, you're rolling the dice. It's like hyperspace yeah. and asteroids, yeah. you know, uh, because they it can warp you to different levels. Uh, but if you're playing this game from a score attack perspective, I'm not sure if that really helps you or not. Now, I, you know, I looked at the docs for this, and I found the same docs on every place I looked. Mm-hmm. It was one single sheet that told you how to start the game, how to load the game, so I had to I looked around to see what the scoop was on this, and I did find Moby. God bless them. They had a description of this, and their description is something like your character is named Zoomer. Did you know that? Zoomer. Zoomer. How creative. Yeah, yeah. Points are awarded when full squares are formed. Now we should mention that if you film if you fill multiple squares at once. You, you get more points, mm-hmm. it's, and you also get an annoying noise. Right. Everything comes with an annoying <laughs> noise. Uh, and uh, you proceed to the next level when all the squares are lit up, okay? Now, there are power-ups, like we mentioned, uh, including one, and I did catch this once, that will let you skip the whole level. Did you mm, ever get that no. one? Yeah. And, and there are some that give you points. The only time I ever skipped levels was when I hit a question mark. Yeah, oh, that, well, that's because mm-hmm. you, got the, you right. got the bonus point. Uh, and when you finish a level, a new like uh, a new board hones into view, tumbles in like the last one, and you take off again. Uh, as I went through the game, I don't know how do you recall what level you ended up getting to before you couldn't get any further. I think I made it to level three or level four. Now you know you could. Sw- I think it was up to level ten. You could pick the level to right start from the on. beginning, right? Yeah. Which that helped because I got to at least try some of the other levels. Yeah, I love it when games do that. Yeah, I do too. And uh, I, apparently, if you get further in this, you can get more levels to skip. But I didn't get far enough. Uh, 
as you go through other levels, you're going to get different enemies. There's one enemy that's irritating. Who's like it's like a set of three balls that sort of rotates, and they but they go around on the same line, and they just go back and forth. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't think that's a big deal, but when you're trying to finish up the squares that are on that line. It's a real hassle. The enemies don't exactly pursue you with vigor yeah. in this game. They sort of just kind of laze about and they, they go about their business. Uh, the lips kind of halfway pursue you. Yeah. But I found myself still dying a lot, even, even given that. And, uh, of course, we haven't talked about the black holes yet. No. Talk about the black holes. There's man. black holes. Uh, they So if you uh, the black holes will open sort of randomly around the level. And if you fall into one of those, you die. Yeah, that's uh, and that, it's a, it's a way because you know you can kind of see inside the mind of the programmer because the levels themselves don't get the the gameplay the game the style of gameplay never changes. You're filling up squares no yeah. matter what. So he's like, besides just adding other enemies, adding more enemies, what else can I do to make this more difficult? How about some randomly appearing black holes? And yeah, so put those in there. So we also haven't mentioned the little critters that come around and screw up your line, which also are, is irritating. There's a lot of, here's the thing, this game is the super frog of, of puzzle games. There's so much crap going on that I just can't keep track of what's happening half the time. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the screen for There's sure. sounds, there's countdowns, like that countdown kept oh, going I hate on. That and the thing. first time I, I heard it, I thought, is the game ending? Right, right. What's happening? Well, no, it's a countdown because you activated like a freeze or something and it counts down, but it's real loud and it seems real important and then when it ends, nothing really happens, stuff just starts moving or mm. whatever. It's a mixed bag in terms of the content of what you play. Now, I want to talk about the controls for a minute, Boat. How did you think this thing controlled? I, and I, I'd be interested to hear what you used to control it, because I use three different things to see which one I like best, uh, like joystick-wise, I mean. I always use the... I played this on the on Mr., uh -huh. and I used a PS4 stick. Okay. And I had okay results. I used the Super Nintendo stick on the Mr., and I used my uh, patented... Uh, dead skin joystick. The Ergo. And I also used the Xbox stick, so I also played this on the uh, uh, Amiga Forever. I okay. tried three different ones. I, don't like nothing. I could not get a good feel for the movement in this game. I had a real difficult time making corners. And mm -hmm. I think I've got... Remember uh, uh, we talked about on the uh, Crystal Castles episode how that game would have been better served with a joystick that was tilted like the joystick in Cubert? Right. This game, I think, would have benefited from a joystick, a four-way joystick. Sure, absolutely. Uh, because I often got hung up on corners, mm -hmm. and that's something that usually happens when you've got all those extra paths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This game I found difficult to control, and it's a game where you need to make split-second turns. You can't miss a turn or you're boned. Right. And I, I found it uh, very annoying to miss these turns. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, so this is one game where I, I'd kind of like to put in the arcade machine, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a four-way in one of your machines. Yeah. We should rig this up so that would see be how neat. it goes. It would be cool. Because I think I think in this game, uh, if you the control was the number one thing I didn't like, by the way. Even with the other stuff we've talked about, that was the number thing I didn't like. Because I, I like I like games where you fill in the puzzle. You know, I like, like Amadar, it's, it's not my favorite, but it's okay. But I like it. I like all these games. Those yeah, but are like I like, my favorite like I'm a big style fan games. of Kicks. Mm -hmm. You know, I Crush like that. Roller. Yeah, I like that sort of stuff. City Connection. Oh, well, no, let's not go crazy. <laughs> uh, but I think this could be a lot of fun. And what this game also has, and we haven't touched on this yet either, it's got two player support, and it's two player simultaneous, and you can play cooperatively or competitively, which I didn't get to do this. But that would probably be a lot of fun mm -hmm. to try to play this game with two people. Uh, my biggest problem, and it, some of it stems from not knowing the game well enough, because uh, you really have to memorize what all the different power-ups do, what they look like. But if you get that done, get your controls down, I think you might have something. I would have preferred a an offensive weapon. And I would have preferred uh, a mode, which I think is also in Amadar, where you, it's like a, when you eat the power pellet and you can go after the monsters. I'm always a fan of when you can turn the tables on the bad guys for a short amount of time. It, it's, it, there, are, there are things you could do to, to this game and to tweak it a little bit. It would, to be honest with you, it would radically change the game. You could add the Amadar thing. You mm -hmm. could add power pellets. Right. You could you could make you could you could make the enemies jump and you could go under them like an Amadar. I will say so. that's what you said. I would would be preferable to what you do. 
Right. The little but the things you drop suck. Yeah. Like they look dumb. They look I don't dumb. like them. Mm-hmm. It, I, and this is a game where I almost got into a zone where I just have tried to avoid everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, because which I think that's probably the way the game should be made in the first place. Mm-hmm. Just avoid everything. Avoid the power ups. You darn sure want to avoid that question mark because as far as I can tell, and maybe you can correct me. I never saw any way to earn extra men in this game, and I never earned one not one time. Did you? No. So, I, and I read some comments on Lemon where they talked about uh, the same problem, not being able to earn extra men. So, when your men are, are of vital importance, and so when you lose one simply by going across a question mark, I mean, you can do that in the first minute of the game, mm-hmm. you know, and, when, and then you're screwed. So, right. especially if you're playing for points. This could be a pretty fun points game if you're going to really point press and try to combine the two squares. Mm-hmm. There might be some extra fun there, you know. And I would like to try this with two players. I will say that. Might I would have liked. I wish that you could have. Um, you know, you can you can get two squares at a time, but you can. That that's a maximum. That's all you can do. I would right. have liked to have seen a mechanic where you can chain multiple squares together and get four or eight. At sort a of time. make sort it of like more kicks. kicksy. Yeah. yeah. And, and or even levels that let you do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or how about this? How about some levels where they just don't have that center run? Mm-hmm. So you can do that by default. Right. So then you can combine. Like, what if you could combine two big ones? Right. That'd be the equivalent of four. Mm-hmm. Just to break it up. Yeah. That might be more fun. And again, we didn't get, I didn't get past the 10th level. So I don't know what happened. Maybe some of the stuff gets implemented later on. But if I couldn't get there, mm-hmm. I didn't come close, right. to be honest with you. If now, I hadn't had been had the ability to skip through the levels, I would never have gotten to the T10. Now, our friend Mr. Newhouse didn't stop with the Amiga port of this game. No, no. Uh, one year later, uh, he managed to put out a version of this that uh, actually was published by Sega. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, and this, is, Aaron, is a much, much different game. Oh, man. And, Boat, I did get a description of this game. You got to hear this. Because they really changed it up, and we'll get into what it looks like. But listen to this. And if you look at the wiki for this game, this is what they've got written down. So they just assume they're all like this, but mm. they're not. <laughs> okay, so the plot of the Genesis version, Earth has been captured by space phantoms using magical force fields. The only hope for survival is Mr. Smart, a rabbit-like creature. <laughs> Mr. Smart <laughs> must travel from shield to shield while running, while outrunning the space phantoms in order to save the world. So in the, in the uh, Mega Drive version of this, uh, the Pac-Man is gone, mm-hmm. and you, he's been replaced with this little freak that has, like, uh, It's a representative ears. of a rabbit-like species. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right, Boat. <laughs> Big time. And what he does is he doesn't, you know, he doesn't pack around the stage. He glides. It's like he's on roller skates. He Yes. He... Uh, uh, in, in some way, did you play this? Yeah. What did you think of this uh, game? This I mean, is this is a much better. This is this is exactly what would happen if you gave somebody a second chance to to, to do a game again. It's a better version. It's a better yeah, version. I agree. I can't. It's stupid. That plot is stupid. The right. guy looks kind of dumb. So I it mean, plays a lot I think better. That what what this guy did was actually smart because he's like, okay, I'm going to make a proof of concept and release it on the PCs. I don't care how many sales I lose to piracy. Yeah. Because there's a chance. That you know the the Mega Drive is brand new. You know this thing came out the same year that the Mega Drive came out. There's a chance that Sega is going to be on the lookout for some promising young talent yeah. and give me the big bucks to produce a version of this game that's worth yeah. playing. And I saw the Discovery was behind this too, yeah. so it's the same outfit. Well, Discovery is Mark Newhouse. Uh, but I, well, I, maybe I don't know. Yeah. But I agree with what you said. They took this game, they juiced it up graphically. They get, because Roy, really, let's face facts, the little Pac Man. As dumb as the guy looks in the Mega Drive version, it's better than a little Pac-Man. Pac-Man's been done, yeah. brother. You need something. I mean, really, you got to come up with something better than that. They came up with a dumb plot, but they made the bad guys look better. Mm-hmm. The control was infinitely better. There's one thing that I like more about the Genesis version, too, that actually has to do with the gameplay. Yeah. And that's uh, the a lot of times you can't tell very easily what sections of the maze you've run over. Yes. In the Amiga, the Amiga version. version, yes. And this, it lights it up like neon in a rainstorm. I, I agree mean, with really that. really looks sharp. That's a real problem. in the Because mm-hmm. uh, how many times have you thought you were finished? Right, and there was a little chunk at one area you didn't know you had to get to. That's a that is a problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, uh, it's not bad. It's is this something I'm gonna if I'm gonna fire up the and play this over and over? 
Eh, probably not, but no. it's not bad. But for I mean, for a, a game that came out the first year the Genesis was available, yeah. I mean, this is this is a solid entry. It's sure. funny though, because uh, if you look at the wiki, the Genesis reviews were were not kind. Really, they crushed this game. They hated it. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe they were looking at it through the lens of all the other categories. Well, but, I mean, they were these were, were console they review, These were console reviewers from, at, from the day. From the day, yeah. Interesting. So they, they, okay, it, maybe they were looking. You know, this is. We run into this sometimes when we review these arcade-style games. Yeah. They say, you know, this is a 16-bit console. You need to have some new... You know, this, this game ostensibly looks like it could have come out of the early 80s, well, just, you know, tilted listen, on the listen side. Listen to what EGM said, all right? You've heard of EGM, Oh, right? yeah. I used to they read gave this the a 3 out of 10. That's crazy. And they said the game looks 16-bit, but delivered gameplay style similar to an Atari 2600 yeah. title. Well, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> that department. And then one reviewer of Free GM stated, this is a quote, Easily the worst game to yet appear on the Sega Genesis and not worthy of the system. Mm. Burial. Yeah. With all that said, let's see how the Amiga reviewed. I did have a chance to have a quick look. Uh, the li- people at Lemon regard this fondly, Bo, 8.08. Well, you know what they say, you know, a bad game on the Genesis beats a good game on the Amiga. Well, Amiga. to be, I mean, let's face facts. This is, uh, this was released earlier, slightly. And it's not a bad game. No. And also, you know, but the Genesis, it, I'm not going to go there. Um, this uh, received an aggregate score of 73%. The usual suspects, your Amiga gave it 73. Uh, the Games Machine, 77. Commodore User, 8 out of 10. Uh, and Amiga Computing, at 69%. So they were all in the same wheelhouse. Do we get any Discord action on this bad boy? Oh, yeah, we did. Our first review comes in from Pajaco, 6502. He says, another new one on me. I like Amidar, so this should have been right up my street. I started playing and quickly found the controls to be insert expletive here. Playing with the D-pad improved things slightly. Uh, Ramping up the difficulty early on makes this a tough game. Most of the time, I was dead by level 2, which I feel is down to the control problem, causing me to run into enemies after failing to change Mm -hmm. paths. I heard that. Pickups will help you or give you score. The question mark, however, ranges from completing the level early, costing you points, to outright killing you. So I avoided yes. picking it up. There it is. And the bombs, I didn't really use much. No, I didn't either. Did you use them that much? No. I'm not sure. How, I wasn't sure how they even functioned. I don't know. I don't know. We Again, we didn't have a manual with this game. <laughs> we just had a, a piece of paper saying, this is how you start the and game. And the thing is, I saw on eBay, people had this thing spewed out, and it had stuff. Surely there was something in there, mm. but no one, I guess no one scanned it. It says, annoyingly, starting a new game requires the keyboard, but you can select a level and start the game with a controller. Graphics are okay for a 1988 Amiga game, but is lacking in any in-game music, making it a little dull. Weirdly, the death sound in my version seems to be different to the YouTube videos I've seen. Yeah. I really wanted to like this one more, but I just couldn't gel with it. Better controls would have made it a classic 6 out of 10. Yeah, there are other versions that have just different, that the sound's different. Makes sense. They, these were probably sound files that you could swap in and out. I, like I, I, I would assume, I think maybe there was the, they did a U.S. and the, uh, the European release. Maybe so. It. Maybe they got in trouble with the hammer and they went back and changed it. You mm-hmm. know, who knows? Uh Z9K9 writes an original twist on the old game Doom, in which you run a garish in which what an original twist on the old game Doom, in which you run a garishly terrifying baby Kodakamon around a pseudo 3D world. What? <laughs> no idea what any of that means. I didn't mind the controls. Seemed just like Amidar. You just have to be quick. It's annoying. You must avoid the question marks for the chance of instant death, but at least the sparkles as they spawn are avoidable. Whereas I very much didn't like it when it spawned a hole right underneath me. With yeah. no extra lives to be earned in the game, it's hard to forgive even the slightest unfairness. And it's normally quite generous with the power-ups, except when it's not, and that can really shape your game. But despite that, the game is still fun and very addictive. Just love coloring things in and filling things up. 7 out of 10. Did that made a coloring book. I didn't have it appear right under me, but that is disheartening even to hear that. Yeah. And clearly he couldn't get extra man either, and he's probably all, it sounded like he was better at it. So yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right, Aaron. That's going to now. Did you look this thing up on eBay? I I did. But believe it or not, this thing, from what I found, goes for some bucks. Okay. Now, uh, I saw one completed that sold fairly cheap. Like, but I mean, the ones that are up now, eighty-five bucks, one hundred thirty bucks. These are complete. And the discs, there were a lot more discs that were complete games. Uh, they were going for you know, 12, 15 bucks, give or take. Uh, it's, I saw one of these. This thing came in like, instead of a box, it looks like it came in like a flat folder that would open like this, mm-hmm. you know? Gatefold. A gate, thank you. And, and there with little like envelope slots mm-hmm. in there. 
so this may not have had a, a, a big box, but maybe it did. Who could say? But the pictures I saw didn't seem to indicate it had one. Yeah. What do we, do you, before we leave this thing, what do you think? Is this old? Do you like it? Would you play it again? What do this you think? This one I would go back to. What do you think? Two players on this sometime? I we think should we, should try, we should try and give this a shot. Two players. I think it would be fun. This is not a bad game. If you haven't tried Zoom, zoom on over to your oh, Amiga Oh, I see what you did there. And Cle- check it out. Clever boy, Bo. Clever boy. All right, Aaron. It's time to check out what's been going on in this week's Amiga News. Oh, man. It's time right now. It's uh, time right now. <laughs> Amiga News. All right, Aaron. Coming up first, Doug from Dynamic Computing. What is Dynamic Computing? I've always wondered that. I don't know. Listen. Does, does he own a company or something? I don't know. I'm thinking about introducing myself with some made-up words, too. Can, do, what you, what you, do you have a company on the side? What do you call it? This is John Schaller from XeroxRepair.com. You should call Boat, boat fix. <laughs> oh, I don't work on boats. I am boat. You should tell them down the phone. They can be your catchphrase. He's back, Aaron, and he is upgrading his Amiga 3000 with an A3640 accelerator. Oh, man. Why would you want to do this, Aaron? You know, I believe not, this, I've not seen this one yet, so mm. I don't know. I'm not even sure. I guess because I make it faster. Now, <laughs> he talks about, now you're, you're going to be shocked by this, but yeah. he has a little bit of trouble. He has a little bit of trouble with the old A3640. All right. Seems like this thing was not really meant for the A3000. It was giving him lots of memory errors and things like that. Yeah. Apparently, the, the way that this thing handles memory is not ideal. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you listen. You know, I did see some of this. Because I remember him talking about having heat issues on this thing. So, he glued a hot uh, heat sink on it. You're trying... you got to understand something about these. Not just Amigas. Just all old PCs. Mm-hmm. We're trying to do crap with these that they. I mean, it's it's madness, boat. It's madness. You're these. You ever seen these uh, uh, accelerators that, that mount on top of a J lead chip and they literally are like reverse sockets? That's not supposed to work. <laughs> and they have people are like, well, heck, it keeps popping off. That's not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's craziness. And so when you're adding all this weird stuff, to, it's gonna happen. You're gonna run into trouble, and you're trying to double and triple up stuff. I listened to Doug. Uh, Doug did a spot this week on Pixel Got In. He did. They do. They're doing a series where they talk to people with their uh, with their greatest treasures that they have. And his greatest treasure was his Amiga 3000. He loves this thing. Mm. Uh, and it was real interesting. By the way, you should check that out. But you know, I'm not terribly surprised that that he has heat issues sometimes, or that the uh, the RGB to HDMI Pi accelerator won't work with some accelerator because it just you know, this stuff, even back in the old days when you bought this stuff, some stuff didn't play nice together. Now you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, we're going to have computers with two or three Pis in them. And, right. God, I don't know what when, we're going to do. When, when do I get my Raspberry Pi accelerator for my... <laughs> They're going to be strapping Pis on top of other Pis. <laughs> it's going to look like the Sega Tower of Power before we're oh, done. Oh, man. There's the cl- there, uh, this is a new a new uh, speed tester Doug's got here. I've not seen this one before. Yeah, he goes over to SysInfo, but then he fires up the old intuition-based benchmarks. This is version 6.5, copyright 1993 by Lamont Coop. Listen, spoil the ending for me. Did he did it get it working or not? Yeah, it works. Well, good job, Doug. Yeah. So, Doug's working on his stuff. It's always... One thing Doug will do, work or not work, he will give you the full run, blow by blow in an educated and well tempered manner. That's right. I've never seen him get mad, you know, except for people bad mouthing Galaga. And he, I just understand that. I've never seen him get up real upset. He's a very calm. Mm-hmm. He's not like me. He's a calm guy. He's a jolly he's, fellow. He's very chill. Yeah. The Doug. That's why Doug does so well. So good job, Doug. Aaron, our next video comes from the 8-Bit guy, and he is continuing his exploration of the Amiga 1000. Uh, he, you know, Of course, he's done this Commodore history series where he's gone through all of these videos in chronological yeah. order. He's finally worked his way up to the A1000, and he spends his time talking about the different A1000 um, you know, uh, expansions that were available beyond just your typical... RAM expansion like I've got in the side of my A1000. I think you might have one too. See that? I have that expansion right there with the big M, big blue M on mm-hmm. it. Uh, he goes, yeah, I did I did catch this, and it's very similar, you know, <laughs> how this stuff works. He also goes into these uh, the different uh, five and a quarter inch drives. Uh, this is a pretty interesting stuff. He's another guy. He's a very chill guy. You can mm-hmm. tell he's very intelligent. He goes through and, and uh, tests out some of the uh, uh, PC uh 
uh, emulation packages that were out. I actually, man, went back in the day, I was really impressed that the that this thing could read and write PC disks and run DOS. And I tried to do everything a kid would try to do. Well, I keep saying that, but it wasn't a kid at the time. You were like 16. I know. I'm a doofus. Mm -hmm. Everything a big, dumb doofus would do. <laughs> I'm like, man, the, I can use PC transport where to run uh, PC, so it's time to load up Bly, you know, <laughs> load up whatever, and play some games on it. Well, it's not going to do that. No. And then, uh, much like Doug, I ended up getting a hardware solution that it would end up doing a little more. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to be playing Doom or something on the old Yeah, it media. looks like the, uh, the the accelerators tend to run DOS at something like one-tenth the speed of a, of a comparable PC. So, Look at uh, this. not I, great. I've never seen this particular uh, gimmick that he got. It's a sidecar that is just massive. You know, why did the sidecar die? <laughs> There's your answer, because that's as big as a car. It's a literal sidecar. Put wheels on that you thing. You saw sidecars everywhere back in the early to mid-80s, and then they just kind of went away. Well, the, as far as I'm concerned, the king of the sidecars is still that big, huge thing you strap on the side of a TI-99. <laughs> that is the biggest. I mean, you can almost move a family of four into that thing. But, man, you had power right there. The sidecars were no good. Expansion mm. slots were a much more elegant solution to the problem. <laughs> I just love the way that you physically, you know, jostle your way into it, which is probably not good for anything involved, but the way you got to kind of shimmy them together. I'd never seen this particular sidecar that he strips on the Amiga 1000, but effectively, it's got an entire... A PC in it. It's and then it's got, it's, it, it, it too has its own sidecar yeah. for a third sidecar. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know, this does, I will say, I don't get real super nostalgic. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But this stuff, it's so fun and ludicrous yeah. to have 10 of these things stacked along your desk. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had a huge table like that's this. That's what you'd want. That's what you'd want. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I did enjoy this one. I was really good. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron, coming up next. It's a mega mail time. It's a live stream from Chris Edwards. Now, Aaron, you caught some of this. Tell me about it. I did. It. I did. Well, I mean, listen, the one thing that Chris does is like, I, and I didn't, I, I, maybe I haven't paid attention, but he, his people send him their computers. He just fixes them. Like, mm. for, he just fixes them. And so he spends time just talking about different problems, different wacky things he's come across. Uh, it was fun. I, I was in there for a little while. I, just, I, it was, I caught him in between one thing and going to another thing. Uh, and he goes through and just talks. He talks Amiga stuff. He talks about stuff he does. Uh, he work. He fiddles with some stuff. He does some stuff with the software. He was on for a good while. He had two hours. Uh, it was fun. And uh, I, you know, hey, uh, it's it's difficult to live stream sometimes, especially if you run out of like stuff to talk about or no one shows up. And that didn't happen here. Chris, much like us, he could talk indefinitely, and he had people coming in with all kinds of interesting questions and comments. Good stuff. I really enjoyed it. Now, look at that lab he's got, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I love those lights. i got to get with him oh. to figure out how I can get some of those You've got, Amiga but you've signs. got cool decorations. And, those, are, those are extra cool. What you need to do, you got all these students. You just let them sit around. Mm -hmm. Put these kids to work. That's true. They can make wallets and they can make signs, stuff Boondoggle like that. Boondoggle keychains. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, Aaron, our next video comes to us from... This guy, Retro Recipes. I know you love this oh, guy man. here. You can't I'll stop talking this. about oh, all man. the great things Listen, that he does. Listen, I thank God that the people at the Amiga Mini, they, they, they said, who can we get used to display this item? Who's the model slash actor that has his own, <laughs> uh, by the way, has with his hot model wife mm -hmm. and has his own in his giant retro mansion? Let's get him to do it. And sure enough, and the dog, and they fire it up, and here it is. It's funny. I watch this. First of all, I think I sent you a message about how irritated I was. You you you, you broadcasted that live on, on Discord. Yeah. Because he opens this thing up, and it's a prototype of the Mini. Okay, that's cool. And then he plugs the Mini in, and he turns the Mini on, and it looks like he's touched by the Lord. <laughs> like, I thought he was going to... I thought big, big alligator tears were going to... Or crocodile tears were going to roll up in this guy's eyes. He never said anything so stunning and beautiful. Oh, just sit back and soak it in. Are you kidding me, you geek? Get that out of here. I'll watch this, boat. It does give you an, a look at the three or four games in this in this demo version that he gets to look at, and he, he plays a little bit of them and says some clearly not familiar that familiar with a couple of them. He sit there and played them. I mean, it looks okay. I mean, the prototype he's got looks like it was 3D printed. 
Uh, and so it's, I, assumably, this is not what the final version, and the mouse does not look that good at all, to be honest with you. I'm hoping that's also 3D printed. Uh, but he does at least show you the thing boot up and stuff. I was disgusted by this. I'll be well, you know, if you leave burial, all, if you leave all of the uh, antics of the host behind, and you just focus in on what's going on with the machine itself, I think that this could be, um, you know, a, a real home run in terms of they didn't screw up the interface. Oh yeah, they had um, well, they had a good. They knew what they were doing from the from the sixty four. Well, they, I know? think that they've they've continued to hone. Their their skills and right, the, the way that they do the uh, the save state system is very similar yeah. to the the Nintendo minis. I like the way that you physically see where the states go and you push them down into place. If you're um, watching from home right now, if you're watching this, look at this this drawn out moment. This, we just have to be coming across. It's battle chess. Aaron. Look at get this guy hanky. You know when serious chess players play chess, they go straight. To well, battle I mean, chess. he did a battle chess thing. I, the thing is, these they've done some stuff with this channel that I thought was amusing, you know? I, I mean, some of it's dumb, really dumb. Like the bit where they put, they hooked two joysticks into one, or two ports into one joystick so they could use the joystick simultaneously on two machines. That was, even as a sketchy tech, I was baffled and alarmed about how stupid that was. But I mean, and I, this channel had some good comment, but this, this was the low point. You know, I can put up with the dog or anything else, but this was no good. This was no good. Well, there's nothing more to say. Let's burial boat. I don't endorse or recommend now. Well, I'll tell you who we do endorse, and that's this next video. This comes to us from the one and only RMC over in the cave. You know, he, uh, I Neil, heard of him. Neil opened up the cave to the public for the I first heard time that. this past I, I week. I think we had people that were even in there. Yeah, uh, they had a coloring day, and uh, they sat around. <laughs> Oh, what? I'm saying that's what they had, had a okay. coloring day. All and, right. and so, but, you know, and we haven't really talked about this much on the show, but Neil's been producing a series of videos about fixing game boxes. And on this one, he focuses mainly on a box of the Chaos Engine for the Amiga. So I thought, well, we should, we should highlight this on the show. And so, um, you know, Aaron, you've had your share of ratty looking boxes. In still your do. I still do. I absolutely I'm do. looking at a stack of them right over here as we speak. Hey, wait a minute. Those are plastic shelves. I can't do <laughs> I can't think about those. <laughs> um, so, Aaron, have you ever thought about, you know, incorporating any of these advanced restoration techniques on your boxes? Oh, I thought about it for a few seconds, and then I watched all the trouble it was where I was like, eh. I mean, it's one of those things when you're old and you're like, man, I need something to do. Well, you're not, really, you're not really a guy that likes to display his games on shelves. You don't have a well, I mean, you don't I have a to put, I got where to put up. stuff, you know. The Amiga box games I've got are in... Some are in bad shape, but most of them are in pretty good shape. I take care of them, you know. Uh, but, I mean, listen, this was an excellent video uh, that he did. Well, you know, what's interesting is that he's using multiple techniques yeah. simultaneously yeah. to achieve his results. So he's using some reinforcing t paper on the inside, plus some glue. Uh, and, and I like the idea that, of course, his community is, of course, you know, astronomical in size. Yeah. And so you've got legit preservation people weighing in saying, I do this for a living. Yeah, and this is this is and what they, you they yell do. at him yeah. for doing something that they don't yeah. like. Well, I, I don't, that. I don't like that part. But, uh, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think this is. I mean, uh, the thing he does with the magnets and stuff, and the uh, hey, it's very clever. Mm -hmm. I, listen, this is exact opposite of the last batch of YouTubers. We love Neil. Mm -hmm. This guy's as genuine as they come. You know that. You worked with him for a good while, and he, this is like a public service to me. Right. I watch this like, man, this is really good stuff here. And I, I, uh, I do have boxes that could benefit from this stuff. And I will say the stuff with the iron, I would have never thought that in a million years to try that. And then the fact that he takes them on, he also he uh, puts the plastic on them, and they look good. I like the way that he shrink wraps them at the end because that's what keeps them nice because he's going to have hundreds of people coming in taking these boxes off the shelves, yeah. manhandling them. And for him, like I would never do that but because I need to, I, for the show, if I've got the game, I like to get in there and right. sometimes, like this week, if I had this game, I could have used the extra documentation. So I'll get in there. But for, for what he's got cooking, absolutely. It's, but I mean, it's good stuff for a lot of people that just like to have this stuff up on their shelf. I thought this was really excellent. Neil did a good job. On the, and I will say before we leave off Neil, uh, I was part of the cavalcade of people that badmouthed Neil this week for badmouthing Video Pack. And so we said, <laughs> we made sure to send him a good list of all the Odyssey 2 and Video Pack, uh, him and a game of both, so they could both fix theirs and get on the whole, get on the trolley. I both. hope Shea Maxim was on, right there at the top of the list. I did put Shea on there, among mm -hmm. others. But yeah, there's a lot of you know that. 
Yeah. We've had a good time playing with the Odyssey 2 over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, and mine, I love the Odyssey Mine needs too. fixed, too. The keyboard's not working, so I'm going to hop on the trolley Freaking Brazilian with Popeye all day long. Oh, man. All day with the Brazilian Popeye boat. Aaron, our last video this week comes from the one, the only, Amiga Love. Oh, yeah. And by video, I mean not a video at all, because he doesn't do videos. <laughs> Amiga Love. Aaron, this is the Microbiotics Star Drive SCSI driver. This oh, is the thing you've got. This is the thing I've got, yes. Guess what, Aaron? There's a driver update, and new tools have been released for it. Yes. Uh, it's funny. Uh, they, you could send, I believe you could send these in to a guy, and he would do a gimmick on them. And I didn't have it done because it was it costs like a hundred and some bucks. I don't mm, use the thing. Right. Uh, however, it's nice that uh, I'm glad to see something like this come out because I do have the SCSI model uh, with the SCSI expansion on mine. Now, will I ever use this on the Amiga 1000? I don't know. But I do have it. And apparently they're quite prized, uh, these items. And guess what? This came in that batch of stuff that we got from the sketchy guy with the gun. Right. This is just another wacky gimmick yeah. I got from the sketchy guy. That thing guy. just keeps on paying out. Yeah, and so uh, uh, I have not known, I, this is the first I've seen of this, but that's kind of neat. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll bring this to Boat Fest and we'll let some people there get in, tear into it and see what they can do with it. People now, that you, are more this, alerted than uh, me. Yeah, I was gonna say, this This might be cool. Now, like you said, a hundred bucks, I don't know for the amount of use that this would get if it was worth it, but, if the 1000 is your daily driver and you're looking for a salute and you've got one of these boxes already, it might be worth it. It might be worth it. So anyway, check out this article over to be a love. I think it's still the top story over there. You can check it out. And, of course, always read Amiga Love's uh, forums. They're full of tons of good stuff. You know, stuff. one thing I like about Amiga Love is, like, I mean, his name says it all. Mm -hmm. And he's in there working, doing a lot of good stuff for the community, stuff like the Rejuvenator. And, his, and he's got great forums over there. And he's just a real quality guy. You know, we're lucky to, to uh, have so many top-shelf people in the community, like, you know, getting stuff like this done. So good on you, love. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron. Well, our last, uh, of course, little bit of the news comes from our buddy uh, over at Retro Rewind. Oh, man. CA. It's time to talk about Frank the and Frankster. what he's got going on. Now, Aaron, before we even start, we should remind everybody, from March 2nd through March 18th, 10% of all Retro Rewind sales will be donated to the Red Cross and the United Nations HRC to uh, help re help the refugees fleeing the violence in Ukraine. You know, they've uh, just recently noticed that they, they said there are around 3 million refugees that have with more. I know, it's unbelievable. And we all know the horrible, horrible, tragic situation that's going on over there. And uh, any little bit helps. There's also some, uh, I've seen all sorts of... Uh, Nice little things that are going on for the refugees. And Frank, I think, is doing an excellent job uh, pitching in. And that's the way Frank rolls. He's a very uh, charity-minded uh, fellow. And the good thing about uh, uh, doing it this way is, listen, go and buy yourself something. All right? Mm -hmm. You get a goodie or right. a service. Mm -hmm. All right? You know it's going to be solid gold money, quality, because Frank's got a great rep. Uh, you can look anywhere, and, and they will tell you. Talk to people that have dealt with them, which a lot of people. Just come to our Discord. Talk to anybody. A lot of people have had their stuff worked on by Frank or bought stuff there, and it's solid gold. And after you get your solid gold goodie, uh, you also know that you uh, spent a few bucks towards helping those poor people coming out of the Ukraine uh, to uh, get back on their feet, get a, a hot meal. Something like that. So it's win-win all the way around, Boatster. Absolutely. Now, Aaron, this week I want to talk a little bit about Compact Flash. Okay. Now, Aaron, what's your what's been your experience installing Compact Flash uh, interfaces with the Amiga? Well, you know, I'm not necessarily the most delicate installation guy. My philosophy is uh, go out, get it, and then kind of cram it in there and hope it works. Because up, you know, when I was putting all the Compact Flash in my stuff. That was pretty much the only option you had. Roll the dice, pray it works, Boat. That's, mm -hmm. that's generally how I do it. I remember uh, the A600 that uh, you delivered to my house. Yeah. Uh, skillfully installed with a bit of the old electrical tape. Yeah. Oh, there's mm -hmm. electrical tape involved. There's that. You got that right, buddy. Well, you know, if you've got an A4000 kicking around and you don't feel like unwrapping a wad of electrical tape around it, <laughs> you might be interested in the A4000 Compact Flash slot adapter from Retro Rewind, Aaron. Ooh. Uh, of course, this easily gives you access to your Compact Flash card via the back of your Amiga 4000. All you got to do is uh, slot 
that adapter into one of the free slots, connect your IDE cable and you are done. This thing gives you master slave support via a jumper and an activity LED so you can tell when the, uh, when the disc is being accessed. Now, uh, it's important to realize that these things are not hot swappable. You can really screw something up. So if you do get one of these, turn off your Amiga before you insert or remove it. But you can pick one of these up right now, Aaron. Get this. Ten dollars. Oh, you know, here's the thing. If you've got if you get an Amiga four thousand, all right, you've got an Amiga four thousand. That thing that don't, they don't come cheap. No. I saw a thing, a meme. It said it had a guy looking at this uh, Amiga four thousand setup, and he says, "The moment you realize that your hobby is more expensive than being a drug addict, <laughs> and that's what you've got here. So if you've got the four thousand, right, and you don't have this." To put your, are you nuts? Yeah. My God, don't electrical tape it. You get this thing, right. ten bucks. Yeah. You know that's a good deal. Plus, you could save a few extra bucks, Bo, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. What's the promo code, my friend? Amigos ten. Bam. Use the code Amigos ten at checkout. Save ten percent. Plus, feel good in your heart for doing something for the uh, those feel uh, fleeing the bad times over in Ukraine. Yeah. Now, Aaron. It's time to talk about what's been going on over on the old YouTube channel. Oh, man. We've, we've been up to a few things over there, Boatster. Uh, let's start off. We've mentioned it so many times. You might as well talk about it, Boat. We do a little thing. Now, a lot of people might be surprised. Some might be stunned or alarmed, but it's true. We do a little thing we like to call the Atari ST Show. We've been doing it here for a few months now, and we just came out with another episode. This time around, we're taking a look at the arcade classic in quotations crystal castle it is a class it's from the golden era just because you're from games. the era doesn't mean you're a part of the era no like okay who is like the who's a third By tier? Way, this isn't from the golden era this is from like 88 the golden no, era was way back this is from 83 oh, oh you're right all right you're right all right all right my bad so let's talk about like who's like who's the uh like who's a third tier superhero from the golden era well, the golden era was way back. Like I'm, Marine I'm, Man? <laughs> there was a human torch that was a robot. How okay. about him? So he was, we, he was part of the golden era, but you think that he's not a golden era superhero? Well, I, mean, I see where you're going here. You're putting up a pretty good case for this game. How did, did you, in your heart of hearts, you think this is a classic? This is garbage. I don't like this. <laughs> but oh, why are you giving me the business? But it does. It is. It is from the golden era of arcade games, and they were they were trying something new. It's not garbage. You know, the Atari they did a pretty good job. The on port here. is great. The, the problem is, is the arcade game is not that good. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, but they did a good port, yeah. and they bear looks great. You'll notice there was no Crystal Castles too. That's no. what I'm saying. <laughs> no, there really aren't really that many castles in it. They're more like. Big, huge, crazy igloos yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, if you want to check out uh, the antics of Bentley Bear and our review of his adventures, you can check out the Atari ST show. Or more bear baiting coverage. Which we, <laughs> It's true. We, we did keep talk the a lot about rolling. bear baiting. Listen, today. I had so much fun uh, on this one. I don't know why. but it just And the fact that Bentley Bear repeats his performance over and over in his learning games. Mm. I, mean, I'm I can't days, wait but, for edutainment week yeah. in the, the Atari ST <laughs> it's gonna show. It's going to be great. That was a lot of fun. It, check it out. Listen. Some people are like, oh, the Atari ST. I've heard that a lot, okay? Listen, you, we've been pleasantly surprised so far. Yeah. And you've also got to consider, we just talked about an Amiga game from 1988, okay? This this game appeared when Atari had been around a few years and started out of the gate a lot hotter than the Amiga did. So some of the early games you get on the ST, they're looking pretty solid. Exactly. you got to think about before 87, 88, basically before the A500 came out, the gaming scene was hot and heavy on the ST, yeah. and it was nothing on the Amiga. And it, so. it, it, something I learned from the uh, Amiga versus ST show me and Britt did on ARG is that uh, the the ST came out, and it was cheaper, it was more accessible. Mm -hmm. You've got all those, you've got the massive software library of Atari behind you, right. and they had been prepping this stuff in advance, and they did get a nice leg up there at the beginning. So it's worth checking out. I've had a lot more fun with it because you can ask both. I wasn't exactly licking my chops. When he brought this idea to the table, but I've, I've, I'm coming around, Boat. I'm coming around. All right, Aaron. It's time to talk about what's been going on in the old ARG Presents. Well, I should mention that we've moved uh, ARG release date on YouTube to Wednesdays. It'll still tape the same time. We moved to release date, so if you're wondering where we were at, we were coming. Uh, and this week... The topic was games we've come around on. Mm. Games we've come around on. Who, who, who suggested that topic? I don't remember. It was me. Was it you? Yes. I knew it was some goof or geek. Mm. So this was an interesting... 
I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I had more trouble with this than I normally would have. I had a lot of problems picking I, this. Well, it, I, this boggles my mind because surely you change your mind quite often when it comes to games. I don't. Oh, oh it's funny. I do on the. We've played so many Amiga games, I can think of plenty that I changed my mind mm -hmm. on. But you didn't want to double But I didn't cover. want to, yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. so I thought, what if I changed my mind? And Britt picked an arcade game, and I thought, well, I'm going to pick something from the arcade. And this was absolutely one that I couldn't stand. Let me ask you a out. question. WrestleMania. When did Undertaker stop wearing purple gloves? That was when his career effectively was over, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I, did, I liked his old suit. Yeah. I mean, he turned into a biker. It's yeah. a dumb. But anyway, we covered... Two games we came around on. Mine was WrestleMania, the arcade game. And Brent picked another game called Gladiator. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of Gladiator. Very it's a unique. real interesting game. Yeah. A real fun game, but very difficult. And mm -hmm. Brent really... And I didn't realize there are ports of this to like the ZX Spectrum. Crazy. And like the Amstrad. We, but it ended in different names. Mm -hmm. we got to try those at some point, Boat. So if you want to hear what we've come around on, uh, check it out. And I do want to plug... Uh, Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. this week, we're doing, and this is a suggestion from the Brent, it's very timely, we're doing games that have a, an ARG uh, connection, all right? And one of the games we're going to cover is Happy Coding's uh, new release on the Spectrum, Shay's Maxim, which is a port of the uh, Odyssey 2 game, or video pack game we covered. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, so tune in uh, this Sunday, 10 a.m., uh, and check us out. Uh, we would appreciate it. Um, Boat, last on the, on the, uh, on the slate and the, here. And this is quite an auspicious video because this marks the last of this kind of video to appear on this channel. And we'll channel, get to that. It? We'll get to that in a minute. But this right here, that's our good buddy Frodo. And don't worry, Frodo's not going anywhere, but we'll talk about it. This is a, a modern homebrew game on C64. Now, You'll recall, Boat, he did a uh, stream, Modern Games on the NES. Mm, My God, those games looked horrible. Yeah. And so the C64, which uh, uh, is decidedly less powerful than the NES, uh, but in terms of homebrew scene, uh, at least... It, it destroys it, and dominates. Yes, the homebrew <laughs> scene is off the charts. Yeah. Uh, for the end, I, I you know I haven't seen this one yet. He, this one just this came one up. just came out today. And uh, uh, but these are, are probably pretty awesome. And he goes for three and hours and forty five minutes, hot streaming action. Uh, so check it. Look at that. How great That's that looks. Ralph, That's yeah. a record Ralph. That looks. I mean, look at that. It's mm -hmm. amazing what they could. Or fix it, Felix. I That's guess. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, same difference. So, Bo, get into what what's going on here uh, with our yes new channel. So yeah, we're gonna have a new YouTube channel. All, with nothing but streams all the time, all of the archive streams that Aaron has done that he has not yet released, including a really, really awesome DICOM Coco stream, some stuff that's never been seen off Twitch before. Yeah. All of our streams from Rob and Frodo, whenever we do streams, are going on a new channel called Amigos Stream Team. That's right. Just search for Amigos Stream Team. And we're opening this thing up wider to the community, aren't we, Aaron? Yes, sir. If you're a, uh, if you're a Discord member, somebody that streams often, we're even going to put some of the uh, Team Speaker Regulars content up there occasionally. Uh, we, you know, me and Bo talked about it. We do we do more streaming than we used to, Bo. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame to not... I mean, a lot of it doesn't really fit into the context of, of the Amigos channel proper. And so we thought to ourselves, what if we don't... Why don't we just get a stream channel going... Uh, to put stuff like uh, our like for tonight when we stream. I mean, uh, it, not necessarily. We're going to be tonight. By the way, we're streaming uh, Saturn games. I guess mm -hmm. Sega Saturn, right? Because I got my, I got a new uh, gimmick for the Saturn, right? Not necessarily something that's going to appeal to every everyone, but put it on the stream channel. That way, it's not lost because we've had so much content on Twitch. It just goes into the ether. It's never seen again because Twitch doesn't hold stuff like YouTube does. And uh, we thought it'd be a fun way to get other people involved uh, in the in the Amigos family, as it were. Uh, and so some people that are uh, uh, proper streamers that we see all the time, like a Frodo or Rob Flack O'Hara, you'll see their stuff on there. And you'll also see uh, streams from people that don't normally stream. Maybe the Brent might put something up there, for example. So it should be a lot of fun. And it's our way to open up sort of a new uh, a new way of looking at the uh, at the Amigos family as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you're going to notice that a lot of the old streams uh, that are are going to appear on there that you probably may have seen in the past or whatever, some of that stuff that's been lurking on my hard drive for years, I'm going to put up there 
So uh, it should be a lot of fun. We do hope you will add this channel uh, to your uh, subscriptions on YouTube. Bo, go, give them the exact name of the channel, my friend. Amigo Stream Team. There you go. Is it all and one I, word or yeah, three different it's words? three different words. Three, there you go. And I dropped the link in the uh, Twitch right now if you're watching live. Good job, Bo. So check us out. We would appreciate it. And if you're interested in streaming something on there, give us a, give us a shout. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Uh, it's time to thank all the fine folks that make this show happen. It's oh, time man. for the Patreon song. Now, Aaron, last week, it was a back-to-back -back Beatles bonanza. Well, <laughs> that's one way to put it. <laughs> uh, last week's song was I'm a Loser. <laughs> okay. Okay. You familiar with that? Burr, that, burr, 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 yeah, that's, burr. that was it. That was actually a Beatles song. <laughs> uh, L. Curtis Boyle got it. Happy Coding ZX and TMX Online. Uh, another classic track from the Beatles for Sale album. Now, I will tell you straight up, we're not doing another Beatles track. Back no. to back is enough. We are going to do a full band number this week. Oh, That's man. right. It's the return of the June Bugs. Oh, brace yourselves. Get Thank ready. God. Hit it, Aaron. Oh, wait a minute. Don't hit it because i got to tell everybody. John at AmigosPodcast.com if you know the answer. Uh, see if you can beat L. Curtis Boyle or Rob Flack O'Hara. They're normally number one with a bullet on these. Uh, get your answers in, and if you're in the chat, make sure you email. Don't reveal the answer in the chat. All right, Aaron. Nelson, Kim, Tommy, Wolfbutt, Stad, Daniel, Big Ben, Little Bear, too. Darren Coles, Jason, Morris, Pixels, and John. All right. So I want to thank Graham, W. Vebke, Martin, Reflection for uh, laying down some hot, hot guitar licks. And of course, I'd like to thank myself. Man. It's the June Bugs, Aaron. We'll be back soon with another great tune. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm like, no, so, hey, the drumming and guitar work are outstanding on that. So, uh, we'd also like to thank our Twitch subscribers. Big shout out to HSEI Ken for dropping oh. a boatload of gift subs just yeah. a second ago. Nice work, HSI. Uh, we do record the show live every Friday around 5 o'clock. Uh, and uh, now that we're on Daylight Savings Time, check your local listings because everything's in flux. We may never be off Daylight right. Savings Time. We're in. Right. The government here, they're doing their best to get rid of the stupid thing. Yeah. So, uh, we'd like to thank all of our Twitch subscribers, including Blow Jellyfish, Orom, Paco Take, The Mr. Chip, Da Crabs, MTG, Amiga Live, Mitsuyama, Grizzla, Pixel Rageous, mm -hmm. Jigglebox, mm -hmm. Neg Sol, Buck Owens, McCannon, Wide World of Retro, Wing Chun Wolf, Ooh. Flip Bop, <laughs> Retro Rewind.ca, mm. Explorer, Blue Train, Edvin Helland, Oil of Hope. Oh, yes. Super Dan. Mm. Retro Jerry. Jost 80. Uber Scuba Diver. Pishbot. Scumboy. Still Adolescing. John Marshall 3. Amy Steph. Eeyore 4077. Frodo NL. Twilight Zoner. Luminate 08. Matt Dufour. Real Retro Dude. Jason Warrens. Thurso Bard. Beach Bum 7. Barkbit. Gary Heather. And Great Al G. And Jabasaw. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to us on Twitch. The healthy list, boat. What are we going to play next weekend? Aaron? Well, let's find out, shall we? Bam! <laughs> Warlords. Oh, man. I know about this game thanks to the Chud. Yeah, this is not the Warlords you might have wanted. No, but I know about this game. The Chud's favorite game of all time are is Warlords 2. Yeah. Why can we not have him on the show now? I'll week? see what I can do. Maybe I, I would can get love the Chud on, Chud on in here. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you as always for watching. We'll be back next week for Warlords. Until then. Adios. Adios.